What's up guys? I'm Cody from Auto Mafia Racing. We have Zach, AKA Watch My Eco, and Tommy from Auto Mafia Racing. And today we are installing our Mafia Made Turbo Kit on this beautiful, beautiful 2014 Roush 3.7 Mustang. And we have our whole kit right here. That's everything you need. And we are gonna go step by step as, you know, as in most detail as we can to show you how to install it on your 3.7. Let's get into it. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to install this boost gauge before we actually put the car up in the air and disconnect the battery. We still need to check for accessory power. Uh, I'll show you how to wire this thing in and let's get started. First things first, we want to remove this A pillar. What we're going to do is carefully, gently pull down on it to release the clips. and slide it back. Okay, next thing you wanna do is remove the sill plate. This is also held in by several clips. You wanna gently, carefully pull it up. Next thing you wanna do is remove the driver's side kick panel. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna pull it all forward. Okay guys, as you can see with the driver's side kick panel moved out of the way, it gives you access to all of your wiring. You have your ground right here, and we're going to tap into this violet wire with a green stripe for our 12 volt accessory power. Okay, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be extending the harness for the boost gauge. Obviously, they don't give you a lot of wire, so what we need to do is extend it. What I'm going to be using is 14 gauge wire, non-insulated buck connectors, and some heat shrink. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is feed the harness and your boost reference line through the dashboard. Once the wiring sped through the dash, we can replace and reinstall the A-pillar. As you can see, there's a grommet in the firewall right here. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna feed our boost reference through this. So you gotta pull this out and drill it out, feed your boost line through it. As you can see, I removed the lower part of the dash by taking out the two seven millimeter bolts on either side. You don't have to do this, but it helps. What we're going to do is we're going to tap into our 12 volt accessory wire up here. Again, it's the violet wire with the green stripe. Just for future reference, if you do need a constant 12 volt power source, you have a purple wire down here with a red stripe. These are constant 12 volt sources with the key off, but what we're going to be looking for is an accessory 12 volt power. So it gives it power with the key on, and that's gonna be this wire right here, so we're gonna tap into it. Once all your wiring is done and connected, you're gonna turn the key, make sure the gauge works, which it does. You can also have somebody blow into the boost reference to make sure that the gauge works, but that's not necessary here because we know it does. After you're done, checking the gauge to make sure it works, turn the key back to off, and you can reinstall the kick panel. Once your kick panel is back on, you can replace and install the sole plate. Now that you've finished your boost gauge install, you don't need to know what any power wires are anymore. You're going to disconnect the battery with an eight millimeter socket. You're going to disconnect the negative cable. 
Once your battery is disconnected, we're going to move on to the fuel pump. There's a tab underneath the seat that you need to push and release the seat. And that leaves you with your fuel pump right underneath this black grommet, which we will remove shortly. Okay, okay we're going to remove the cover that covers the fuel pump. There's a release right here that you need to move out of the way in order to unclip the fuel pump wiring from the fuel pump housing. Now, to remove this fuel line, you need to move the blue clip out of the way by simply pressing against it and separating it. Once the blue clip is out of the way, the locking clip, you're just gonna push on the white clip until it pops and then remove the fuel line. As you can see, we cleaned up the sending unit from any dirt and debris. We don't want that falling into the tank. Ford actually changed this design in the later years on the S550. The only way to get this ring off is with a screwdriver and a mallet or a screwdriver and a hammer. You're gonna have to hit these edges and spin the ring counterclockwise. Also, if you guys are gonna do this, I recommend having less than a quarter tank of gas in the car when you do it. If you have anything over a quarter tank or if you're over a half a tank of gas, the second you pop this ring, gas and fuel is going to spill all over the place. It's going to come out of the tank and soak the floor underneath your car. So just be mindful. All right, as you can see, we had some fuel leakage coming from the sending unit once the, um, the compression ring popped. Now, again, like I said earlier, the S550's Ford changed the design to allow you to get this ring out easily without problem. The ring does not and will not come out without cutting a slit into the body panel somewhere to allow you to pull it through. Once that's out of the way, you can remove the, the compression ring that holds in the sending unit. And then remove the sending unit. You might want to keep some rags in your car to stop up some of this gasoline. Okay, you'll see another fuel line that you have to disconnect. You're gonna push on the clip and remove the fuel line. Now that the sending unit's out of the car, you have to release all of these tabs and separate the casings in the sending unit. After using hacksaw blades and prying on it for a little while, we finally got it to pop out. What you're gonna do is you're going to disconnect the fuel pump from the sending unit. You're going to disconnect the level sensor. You should be able to pull the top of the sending unit off. Next you're going to cut the thin black line that connects the bottom of the sending unit to the top of the sending unit and pull it apart. Once the sending unit's apart, everything's unplugged, the level sensor and the fuel pump is unplugged. The next thing you're gonna do is release the strainer from the filter. <clears throat> you're gonna wanna take your razor knife and cut the hose that you just cut to release it from the sending unit. After you cut the hose, you're gonna to wanna to remove the fuel pump from the sending unit. You have to straighten out this ground tab and pull it through to release it. 
and then the fuel pump should come right out. Then take your razor knife and remove the excess hose from the sending unit. Now we're going to get ready to install our DW400 fuel pump. This comes with just about everything you need. It comes with a new plug, it comes with the retainment rings, a new strainer, and a new fuel line. In order to make the pump fit into this sending unit, you're going to have to cut the sending unit right here and on the inside, right here. I'll show you how to do that. Now that that's opened up, your DW400 should fit right in. Check to make sure the, the, fuel, the new fuel pump fits in the sending unit, which it does. Also, you're going to want to take note of the direction that the old fuel pump was in. I believe it sat like that. Okay, on the outside casing and sending unit, the lower part, you're going to need to remove this extra piece of hose. Okay, next we're going to open up the package of hardware that comes with the DW400. You're going to find the smaller of the two clear tubes. You're going to install the ring over the tube like so. And press it onto the sending unit. Once it's on, you're going to use wire cutters to crimp the crimp connection. Pull on it to make sure that the hose is on and it's not coming off. You put that aside for now and go back to the top of the sending unit. First thing you're going to want to do is put the strainer on. Once the strainer is on and positioned in place, you're going to attach the large hose with a permanent hose clamp. You're going to slide it on the fuel pump. You're going to route it in the same direction as the OEM hose. Again, you're going to take your dikes or wire cutters and you're going to crimp the connection. Now you're going to take your DW supplied harness, you're going to plug one end into your fuel pump. the other end into the top of your sending unit. And you're going to reconnect the ground strap the same way it was. Now you're going to put the top of the sending unit back down into the bottom of the sending unit. You can snap it together. And finally reconnect the small hose. Finally got to plug your level sensor back in. Reinstall the top of the sending unit. And it's good to go back in. Once the ring's back in place, you can bend the tab back down.
reinstall that line and the locking clip that goes on it. And you can reinstall the plug. Reinstall the grommet. And you can reinstall the seat and you're done. Now that the fuel pump's complete, you're gonna reconnect the negative terminal on the battery, put the key in, turn the key to on, and make sure you hear the fuel pump spinning. Go ahead and shut the car off and disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. To complete the fuel pump, we're gonna put the seat back in. You wanna try and line these tabs up with the corresponding spots underneath the upright seats. Also, I find it easier if you use the seat belt to pull the actual other half of the seat belt through. Once they're all through and you're lined up, just push the seat down and snap it back into place. Okay, now we're gonna start with this assembly on the bottom of the car. What you're going to need is an eight millimeter and a seven millimeter. Okay, with your seven millimeter, you're going to remove all of the screws that hold on the front lip. I recommend and suggest that you put them in a bag or a can or something so you don't lose them like I just did. Next thing we're going to do is disconnect the downpipe. It's going to be two 15 millimeter bolts right here and up there. We're also going to unplug the O2 sensors. You can either pull them out of your, your downpipe or you can unplug them so that they come down with the downpipe. After the front's off, you want to come back here to the back of the um, crossover pipe and loosen these two 15 millimeter bolts on either side. You're going to want to pry these tabs back, that way you can move the exhaust couplers out of the way and drop the exhaust. Put this in. Next thing you're going to want to do is unplug all of your lights. Remove the seven millimeter bolts that hold the bottom of the bumper to the fender liner. At the top of the car, you're gonna take a panel tool and release all of these buttons. Once all the push clips are removed, you're gonna remove the trim panel. trim panel removed, you're going to want to remove the 8 millimeter bolt that hold in the top of the bumper. Once 
once all the bumper bolts are out, I have a friend help you remove the bumper by pulling the sides out of the clip. releasing the bumper. Now take off the 10 millimeter bumper support bolts. Down at the bottom, there's going to be two eight millimeter bolts that hold the bumper support. With a panel tool, pop the ends out. The next thing you want to do is remove the brackets that hold the top of the radiator. The next thing we're going to do is disconnect the mass airflow sensor. You want to pay attention to which way it goes back in the vehicle. Now we're going to remove the cold air intake tube or your factory air box. You're going to want to take out your mass airflow sensor and put it aside, save it for later. You're going to want to remove your strut tower brace to get access to the upper intake manifold. Okay, these brackets need to come off because you need to clear the duct work out of the way for the intercooler piping. They're kind of a pain in the ass. There's an eight millimeter bolt between the radiator support and the headlight, which has to come out. With a prior panel tool, you're gonna to wanna to remove the ambient air temperature sensor from the ductwork. Next thing we're going to do is separate the ductwork by releasing the tabs. Again, with your panel tool, remove the push clip and take the ductwork out. Now that the ductwork's out of the way, you can put your bracket back. Okay, I'm going to show you guys this because some models actually have a brace that holds the AC lines to the fan shroud. In order to get the intercooler piping through, you're going to have to take the 8 or 10 millimeter bolt that holds the bracket to the fan shroud. You're going to have to remove that and possibly cut off the bracket to get some more movement. This particular model doesn't have it, but most models do have it. I'll show you a clip from the bottom to let you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay guys, here's another angle from the bottom. This speed clip right here usually holds the AC lines with a bracket to the fan shroud. You're going to have to remove that eight or 10 millimeter bolt 
to remove the bracket. I always cut the bracket off also to give the AC lines a little bit more movement out of the way when you go to put the intercooler piping in. Okay, we're gonna remove these speed clips and put them aside because we're gonna use them in a different location later. Moving right along, we're gonna take off the intake. That way we have access to our fuel injectors. You're gonna need an eight millimeter. First thing you're gonna do is remove the eight millimeter from the brace. And just loosen the bottom one. Next, you want to disconnect your throttle body. And any sensors that you have. The factory Ford connectors are push lock connectors. You're going to want to push on it and pull it out of the way. Same thing with this, there's a, a little release. Just pull it out of the way. With channel locks or pliers, you're going to squeeze and release. Next thing you're gonna do with an eight millimeter, take all of the bolts out of the upper intake. Just put that out of the way. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, and one in the center. It's seven. For the panel or trim tool, free all the harnesses. Take us free to come off of the engine. I'm gonna try and clear all of the vacuum lines and hoses out of your way. Just push them off to the side. The fuel line. Remove the plastic locking clip, the red plastic locking clip. Push in the factory clip that holds the fuel rail. Move it out of your way. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take a rag or something, cover up your lower plenum. You don't want anything to fall into your engine. And you can go ahead and remove your foam covers. Next, with a pick, you're going to want to release all the red safety locks on your fuel injectors. And remove the plugs from your fuel injectors. The next thing you want to do is remove all four of the eight millimeter bolts from the fuel rail. Now that all the bolts are out of the fuel rail, you wanna just pull up on the fuel rail and pull the injectors out of the lower intake plenum. All right, once the fuel rail and the injectors are out, you wanna make sure all of the O-rings came out with the old injectors, which in this case it did. Sometimes they stick in the injector bungs you're gonna have to get a pick or something to pull them out. Also, make sure these are clean and free from debris and dirt before you put the new injectors in. 
Okay, before we put in our FIC 1000 injectors, you're gonna have to remove the metal clips that hold the factory injectors in. Once the metal clips are out, just pull out the injectors. There might still be some fuel or some O-rings in the fuel rail. Just dump that all out. Okay, before we put in our new FIC injectors, we're going to remove the extension from them and we're also going to grease up all of the O-rings. Once all the O-rings are greased and the injectors are back in, you can replace the fuel rail. Make sure you cleaned all debris out of the injector bungs. And just put it back on the way it came off. You're gonna grab your four eight millimeter bolts and bolt it back down to the lower intake. Once everything is snug, you're gonna tighten them down in a cross pattern to 89 inch fans. Now we can plug in our injectors. Okay, before we put our upper intake back on, we're going to be gapping our spark plugs. Um, these plugs, you're gonna wanna gap down to 0 0.028 to avoid any type of spark blowout from the extra boost in the cylinders. So get yourself a spark plug gapping tool and gap these down to 0 0.028. Okay, we're gonna start by taking out all of our coils with an eight millimeter. Next, we're going to pull out all of our plugs with a 5.8 spark plug socket.
going to put our new plugs in. Make sure you don't cross thread them. Start them by hand. Snug them down. And we're going to torque them later. Okay, once all the spark plugs are in and hand tight, you're going to torque them down to 13 foot pounds. Now that all your spark plugs are in and torqued down, you can replace the coil packs. Once all the coil packs are in, you're going to torque them down to 89 inch pounds. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is reconnect the fuel line. Pop it on and then put the locking clip in. Now we're ready to put the intake back on. So you're going to remove your rag. Line it up with the pins and it should drop right on. You're going to want to start these by hand and then they get torqued to 89 inch pounds. Now according to Ford, you're gonna when you tighten it, you're gonna want to start in the middle and work your way out. In a star pattern. Now if they're all snug, torque them to 89 inch pounds. In this segment of the video, we're going to be wiring the oil pump for the turbo feed. This is the wiring kit that's included with the kit. Um, you, want to be you want to be careful when you take it apart. It does have shrink wrap attached to it. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Red goes to positive, black goes to ground. Yellow is your signal wire. I'll be showing you where to tap that in later and your power and ground out go to the oil pump. Your positive, you want to go to the positive on your battery. Your negative, you want to ground right here. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. 10 millimeter, you're going to loosen up this nut on the battery terminal. You're going to put your red wire onto the terminal and replace the nut. Next, you're going to loosen one of the ground nuts. Connect your black wire. And 
Next, you're gonna run your red wire under and out of the way. Bring it up to the front. Your yellow wire, you're going to T-tap into the yellow wire on this harness. Next, you're gonna T-tap this yellow wire with the supplied T-tap. Once your T-tap is on, you're gonna plug in the signal wire from your oil pump. The extra black wire that's included, you're gonna to wanna to take this 10, mil 10 millimeter bolt out. Usually what I like to do is take both of these, tape them together and make a harness. Once the wiring is wrapped, you're gonna run it along the top of the radiator support with a factory harness. And you're gonna come down Tuck it down behind the headlight. <clears throat> Once the wires are tucked down behind the headlight, you're gonna use a panel tool to remove the harness from the frame rail. And also remove the harness from up here. Next thing you're gonna do is take an eight millimeter and remove your your horns. Next, using a pair of pliers or an adjustable wrench, you're gonna bend this tab down. Then you're going to need a 3 8 and a 5 16 drill bit. The bottom hole, drill it out with the <laughs> Now you're going to measure up from the bottom of the hole, one inch and mark it. Once your mark is there, you can drill a pilot hole with an eighth inch bit. After your pilot hole is drilled, using a 5 16 drill bit, you're gonna drill out the top hole. Once your holes are drilled, you're gonna to wanna to remove the speed clip that was holding the horns and replace it to the hole that you drilled. After you've removed and replaced the speed clip, make sure your horns fit. Next, from the frontmost hole on the frame rail, You're gonna measure up from the back of the hole to an inch and three eighths, mark it and drill it. You could start with an eighth inch drill bit to drill yourself a pilot hole, and then drill it out with a 5 16 drill bit. Using the OEM speed clip from the air box that I told you to put aside before, you're gonna take that speed clip and slide it into the hole. Next, you wanna take a razor blade or a razor knife and cut the rubber stoppers on the wire side of the pump. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is mount the oil pump for the return line on the turbo. We're gonna use the, the kit supplied hardware and the factory OEM 8mm bolt from the airbox. 
you want to install it with the wires facing up. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is wire in our oil pump. Red to red, black to black. First thing you wanna do, slide on the heat shrink, then connect your wires. Once your wires are connected, slide over the heat shrink, use a lighter and shrink it down. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the harness from the block right behind the alternator. That's the plug that goes to your oil pressure sensor. You're going to want to remove that out of the way. And then with a number 12 hex, you're going to remove this bolt from the block. I don't know if you guys can see that. Right where I'm pointing, you're going to remove that bolt from the block. What you're going to want to do is grease the o-ring a little bit before you install the fitting into your block. Next, try to clean up the oil. Install the fitting into the block. using a one inch socket. Just tighten it down snug, you don't have to over tighten it. Next, you're going to attach your 6AN to 4AN reducer onto the fitting that's already in the block. You can use a 22 millimeter to tighten that down. Okay guys, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna have to show you this on an S550. Um, automatic Mustang owners, you're going to have this check valve, not the check valve that comes out of the brake booster, like on the Roush that we're doing. Um, again, we don't have an automatic S197 here, so I'm gonna try and describe this the best I can using this S550. Now, automatic Mustang owners, this check valve right here, it's got a hose that runs from the back of the check valve all the way to the intake tube. On S197s, it's a little different. It's a rubber hose that goes from here to here. What you're going to do is, you're going to remove the hose from the back of the check valve. You're going to put a vacuum cap on this check valve right here and you're going to save the rubber hose because we're going to be using it later now that that's explained i'm going to show you how to do it on the roush which doesn't have that check valve you're going to lay your hose out from the booster around the back of the intake and here the intake manifold it's around 38 to 42 inches so mark the hose about 38 to 42 inches 
and cut it. Okay, once your hose is cut, you're gonna have to take your razor knife and cut right here on the factory hose that goes from the valve cover to the intake manifold. And I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, now you're gonna put your hose clamp on and then push the fitting into the hose. Once it's all the way on, tighten the hose clamp. Okay, we're gonna disconnect this line right here that goes up to the metal hard line. And we're gonna replace it with a 3 8 to half inch fitting so we can connect our hose that's off the intake. Run the hose behind the engine and you can clip it anywhere you want and put them together. What we're gonna do here is we're going to measure out 46 inches off of the hose that was included. A 46 inch piece is going to go from the bottom of the drain and the turbo to the oil pump. Starting at the approximate location of the turbo, you're going to feed the hose down in between the frame rail and the radiator support. Just tuck this out of the way for now. You're going to put on your hose clamp. And put it on the front of the pump facing the front of the car. With the remaining part of the hose, we're going to measure out 39 inches and cut for the hose that goes from the back of the oil pump up to the oil cap for the return line on the turbo. Your next line is going to go on the side of the frame rail between the plastic splash guard and the wheel well. Put your hose clamp on. and attach it to the pump. Where the hose comes up, it's going to connect to your oil fill cap with a 90 degree MPT fitting and I'll show you how to tap your oil cap for that. Okay, once this metal hard line is removed from the intake, you're going to take your razor knife and you're going to cut it. Pull the thing off. We're going to save this and use it at a later time. Okay guys, using the fitting that came off of the intake directly behind the throttle body, the one that you removed from this metal hard line, automatic Mustang owners, when you remove the rubber hose from the back of the four-way check valve out of the brake booster and put it aside this is where we're going to be using it put a hose clamp on it 
and put it on the fitting that we cut off of the metal hard line. You don't need it to be that long. Okay, using the T vacuum fitting that's supplied with the kit. We're going to put it in the rubber hose that came off of the four-way check valve by the brake booster. Manual transmission owners, you're going to have to find a piece of 3 8 hose from somewhere to put on this fitting that comes off of the intake. Once you find a piece of hose, you're going to attach your T vacuum fitting. That way we can run a line to our wastegate and our blow-off valve. Once everything is tightened down, you can put it back on the intake directly behind the throttle body. If you guys have any questions about this part and the discrepancies between the automatic and manual transmission, you can give us a call and we'll help you out. Okay, manual transmission owners, you're going to need to pick up this adapter. It goes from half inch hose to three eighths hose. You're also, you can also use the um, squeeze clamp or you can just get yourself some hose clamps. So what we're going to do is, this car is a manual, we're going to be installing this right now. If you haven't already done so, you can start connecting everything back to your intake. Okay, in this segment of the video, we're going to be removing the exhaust manifold on the driver's side. You're going to need a 13 millimeter. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove all six of the exhaust bolts. Once all of the bolts are removed, slowly remove the manifold, paying attention to which way your gasket is facing. We're now gonna put the new manifold on. Some of you may find it easier to remove studs or move studs as you see fit. Ford wants you to, to do this in two separate torque sequences using 89 inch pounds. I don't know if you guys can see that. 89 inch pounds starting from the center and working your way out in two separate sequences until it's up to 30 foot pounds of torque. I know it's kind of a pain to get the torque wrench in there, but just try the best you can. 89 inch pounds. The second time around, that's 30 foot pounds. Again, you want to do it in two separate sequences, starting in the middle and working your way out, alternating bolts. Um, 89 inch pounds for the first sequence, and then the second time around, you want to go to 30 foot pounds. Okay guys, before we put our passenger side downpipe on, we're going to put our wastegate in. I'll show you how to do that right here. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to leave it loose so you can still rotate it around once it's bolted up into the cart. Okay, both automatic and manual transmission owners. If you see this harness right here that comes from your starter and goes up above your transmission. We're going to disconnect these plugs by pulling them back. They just slide over the they just slide over the bolt and the transmission, but those need to come off so we can free the harness up and give it more slack. We do that just by pulling them straight back. As you can see right here, we pulled the clip off the end of the bolt on the back of the transmission and there is one just like it on the other side and you do the same.
Just kind of snug these up by hand, guys. You're going to leave it loose until the rest of the kit is finished, and then you're going to tighten everything up. Okay, guys, as you can see, lower down pipe's in. We're not going to tighten anything up yet. We're going to leave it loose until everything's bolted up. Okay, with the supplied silicone vacuum line, you're going to connect it to the bottom fitting on the wastegate. And then you can just zip tie it on. The top one is a vent to atmosphere. With the other end of the vacuum line, we're going to go up in between the harness and the transmission and just feed it up as as far as it'll go it might help to have somebody standing above there to receive the line up top but in this case i don't have anyone so i'm just going to shove it up and see where it goes once the vacuum lines up and ran just throw some time for this to hold it Before we rotate the wastegate into place and tighten it down, we're going to put the wastegate dump tube on it and clamp it down with the V-band clamp. With a five millimeter Allen, a 10 millimeter wrench, open end. We're just gonna tighten it down. Now that that's on, we can rotate the wastegate into place and tighten it down. Again, using a five millimeter Allen and a 10 millimeter open end. Find our vacuum line and pull it up into the engine bay. If you can, try to feed it through underneath this harness and down along by the fuel rail. Once it's ran to the T vacuum fitting, you can clip the small part off, clip the excess off, connect it to the fitting, and zip tie it down. Before we mount our bracket to our intercooler, this is a universal bracket. You can see it's bent for the S550 or the S197. For this application, the S197, we're going to need to straighten this bracket out the best we can by putting it in a vise.
Next, we're gonna mount our mounting bracket to our intercooler using the, the supplied hardware. Thirteen millimeter, but don't tighten them down all the way. That way, you can leave some adjustment for once the intercooler is mounted. Once it's in place, reinstall the ten millimeter bolts that hold the hood latch. Okay, once everything's up straight and centered, you can tighten it all down. You can see the old marks from the 10 millimeter screws on the latch. Try and line that up the best you can, tighten it down. I'm using a 13 millimeter, tighten down the bracket. Next thing we're going to do is install the lower bracket on the intercooler using the supplied hardware. As a 13 millimeter, you just want to get it started and leave it loose. We're going to leave everything loose until everything else is mounted and in place and then we'll tighten it all up later. Okay, using one of the other factory speed clips from either the radiator support or the um, or the air box. You're gonna clip it on that hole right there. And then we're gonna install our secondary intercooler bracket. Using the kit supplied hardware, you're gonna bolt the two brackets together. We're gonna be installing our couplers and our intercooler piping. Um, what I found out is if you take a little bit of waterproof silicone grease and grease the couplers and or the intercooler pipes, it helps with the ease of installation. Like it, it really does make it a lot easier to get this install done. Just a thin film of grease around the insides of the rubber couplers. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take this L-shaped pipe it might be easier for some of you to remove your washer fluid reservoir. We're going to go in between the radiator and fan shroud and the frame rail and you're going to bring it right up in between the AC line. Okay next what we're going to want to do is take our three and two and a half inch T-bolt clamps. You're going to put the one T-bolt clamp on the coupler like so. Slide the other one over the pipe. And put your coupler on. Once your coupler and your pipe are together, you can tighten everything down. In this segment of the video, I'm going to show you how to do the charge pipe side that goes up to the throttle body. You're going to need this pipe like this, the 3 inch 90 coupler, the small 3 inch coupler, and three 3 inch T-bolt clamps. First thing you're going to want to do is take the coupler. And slide it up in between the fan shroud and the frame rail. 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our 3 inch T bolt clamp over the coupler. And just slide the coupler over the inner cooler like that. We're going to put another 3 inch T bolt clamp on the coupler and on this coupler back here. Once those are on, you can go and fit your pipe. Once the pipe is in place, you can tighten everything down. Okay guys, now that this corner is done, you can start to tighten everything up. Once you've adjusted your intercooler and like the fitment and where it sits, you can go ahead and tighten up your horns. You can also tighten up the brackets on the bottom of the intercooler. The ambient air temperature sensor. <clears throat> if you look at the bottom of your bumper, you'll see two holes. You can plug it right into there. Okay guys, in this segment of video, we're gonna show you how to put the fittings onto the turbo. I'm gonna use a little bit of acetone. You can use brake clean, just something to clean off the drain, the oil drain fitting on the turbo. What I like to do is use a little bit of black RTV and put a thin film on the gasket. Okay, once you got your thin film RTV on there, You're gonna put your gasket on the fitting. And then using the two supplied 13 millimeter bolts from the kit, we're gonna put it on the turbo. Okay, once that's done, what we're gonna wanna do is, we're gonna loosen up the bolts on the turbo so that we can clock it once it's in the car. Clocking a turbo means you'll be able to spin the, um, the housing to properly position it in the car the way you want. We want the drain fitting from the turbo facing down. We want the feed fitting facing up and we're gonna loosen it so we can spin the outer housing. Using a 13 millimeter, just loosen these bolts up a little bit until the housing spins. Now we're gonna put the oil feed line fitting into the turbo. It's applied in the kit, it's a 4AN to 8th inch MPT oil resistor fitting. I'll show you how that works. You don't wanna overkill the turbo with oil pressure. So this is a resistor to slow the pressure down. All right, you're gonna notice there are two different size Allen head bolts. You're gonna use the one with the bigger hole, the bigger opening in it. Screw that into your fitting and screw your fitting into the turbo.
Okay, now we're gonna attach the turbo to the T4 flange with the gasket. Doesn't matter which way you put the gasket. You're going to put your T4 flange on. And it's probably easier to put the bolts in through the flange and into the turbo. Now we're going to tighten them all down in a cross pattern. Okay, right now we're going to mop the turbo up, clock it, and then pull it back off. Okay, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the feed and the drain lines are completely vertical, straight up and down. Once your feed and drain lines are straight up and down, you can just tighten this back up with a 13 millimeter, make sure that they don't move. You could just snug a couple of them down and then when you pull the turbo back off, you can tighten down the rest of them. Now we're going to clock the outer housing of the turbo. We're also going to install our charge pipe. So you're going to want to take your two and a half inch T-bolt clamp, slide it over your coupler. Find the longer end on the charge pipe. The longer end goes up towards the turbo. Just slide the charge pipe into the coupler. You can leave all that loose for now. And once the turbo is back in, we can tighten everything up. Once the turbo is lined up to the charge pipe, we're just going to tighten a couple of these bolts down to make sure that they don't move. Now we can take the turbo back out, tighten the rest of them down, and then reinstall. Okay guys, the last thing we're gonna do is install our downpipe. Um, we highly recommend that you do not skip this step. You need to wrap your downpipe with exhaust wrapping. Um, you're gonna need to buy this, this special tool or you can make one out of a Phillips head screwdriver with a metal band clamp. You're gonna go around Put it in the slot and just twist it so it's tight. You can see it on these. The reason we recommend you put this exhaust wrap on is because your plastic fuel lines sit really close to this pipe. So to avoid any future problems, we highly recommend that you wrap your exhaust. You just wanna feed it through and twist it into place. Push it 
back a little bit to give yourself room to put the turbo back on and you're good to go. Okay, before we put the turbo on, we're gonna start by putting the, the turbo drain line on. So put your hose clamp on, slide it over the fitting. and tighten it down. Now we can put the turbo back in. Now you can connect your oil feed line for the turbo. Now we can put our T-bolt clamps on our coupler and connect the charge pipe to the turbo. Once everything's in place, you can tighten it all down. Okay, now we can use our three inch by 11 pipe, our three inch T-bolt clamp. You can leave that loose for now. Once everything's installed, then you can go and tighten everything back up. Okay, in this segment of the video, I'm going to show you how to put your blow-off valve on and your mass airflow sensor into your charge pipe. You can start by taking the O-ring and put a little bit of grease on it, it helps. And it needs to be seated around the lip of the V-band flange. Once the O-ring is on and seated, you can put your blow-off valve on. Then your V-band clamp. Using a five millimeter Allen, you can tighten it down. Now we're going to put our fitting into our blow-off valve. It comes with four crush washers, you're only going to need two. So you're going to put one crush washer on top of the bolt, put the bolt through, crush washer on the bottom, and then just screw it into the top of the blow-off valve. Yeah, you can leave it hand tight for now until we figure out which direction we're going to put it, and then you can tighten it down with a 10 millimeter. Now for the Mass airflow sensor, it's pretty self-explanatory. It can only go in one way. If you try and put it in the wrong way, the holes don't line up. So you're just gonna drop it in, then use the supplied bolts with the kit, and bolt it down. I believe these are seven millimeter. You can tighten down on that, then you're done. Don't forget to tighten down on this once it's installed in the car. Okay, before we put our last charge pipe in, you can go ahead and tighten up the T-ball clamps using an 11 millimeter. Now you're going to need four three inch T-bolt clamps, two three inch couplers, and we're going to install our charge pipe. You guys can do this any way you want, whichever is easier for you. Personally, I like putting them on the charge pipe first before I put it in the car. So that's what I'm gonna do.
Okay, when you put the charge pipe in, you're gonna wanna put the blow-off valve facing down towards the intercooler, the mass airflow sensor up towards the throttle body. Once everything is lined up, you can tighten it down. Okay guys, remember your boost gauge reference from the beginning of the video. We're going to take that vacuum line and boost line that goes to the gauge and we're going to connect it. You can connect it anywhere you want along the boost reference and vacuum line. I like to connect it here so it's nice and short out of the way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up some slack on this boost and vacuum line. I'm going to cut it right here and put in a T vacuum fitting. Okay, using a T vacuum fitting and some zip ties, we're going to install our boost gauge. Now we're going to take the vacuum line from our boost gauge. We're going to run it out of the way. Over the booster. Just kind of tuck it back in there. Out to the T fitting, leave yourself some slack. Cut it and attach it. Now your boost gauge is hooked up. Now we can tighten up the fitting on our blow off valve. Attach our last vacuum line. Once that's all done, you can find the line for your mass airflow sensor and plug that back in. To assemble your billet oil cap, it's pretty much self-explanatory. You're going to take some grease and grease the O-ring. Put the O-ring down into the groove on the oil cap. Put some red thread lock on the fitting. Put the fitting in the oil cap. Now you're going to have to clock this fitting inside the oil cap because there's very little clearance in between the manifold and the downpipe and you want your return, your oil return feed to sit in between the manifold and the downpipe, closer to the downpipe because it's going to be wrapped with exhaust wrap. As you can see, we're closer to the downpipe, so it's against the exhaust wrap and not the hot pipe. And that's it. Okay, now we're going to put our crossover pipe on. It's easier with two people. Have one person hold the pipe up. Hold the pipe up there.
All we're going to do is snug it down a little bit, but leave it loose so you can still rotate the pipe out of the way. Next, we're going to put on this connecting pipe. Have someone hold it on. You want to make sure it's properly seated and there's no gap in between the two. And that way you have no exhaust leak. Once it's all lined up and connected, you can tighten everything down. Okay guys, this segment of the video, I'm going to show you how to extend the wires on your wideband O2 sensors to fit from the bung on the downpipe all the way to the bank one, sensor one upstream plug, which is on the passenger side of the motor. I'm going to be using five lengths of wire, all 35 inches, non-insulated buck connectors, heat shrink, and some loom. I'm trying to stick with the same color wires that are on the wideband O2 sensors which is white, yellow, gray, black, and blue. I didn't have any gray, so I substituted tan. And I'll show you how to do this right now. Okay, guys, what you're gonna wanna do here is cut towards the middle of the harness on the O2 sensor. That way it gives you some extra room to splice your, your new wires into it. After you finish one side, you can put on your heat shrink to cover the buck connectors and then slide your loom over the harness. Okay guys, the last and final step before you can actually start the car, the O2 sensor that I had you extend earlier in the video, we're just gonna screw that into the downpipe. Tighten that down and run our wires behind the intake to the bank one sensor one plug. You just gotta find that plug and plug it in. Now you can route your wires, zip tie it down, and you're good to go. There we go, guys. That is our Mafia turbo kit fully installed. We're gonna cut to some dyno footage and after that, check out the blooper clips. Works out of the way. You can put your. Yeah, can we cut? <laughs> uh. You can just let this hang here. All right, and as you can see here, we've got the. You're going to want to pry these tabs out of the way. That way you can slide the exhaust mounts back. No, they're not exhaust mounts. What the fuck are they called? Couplers? Um, Couplers? Yeah. 
Good. You're going to want to remove any type of strut tower brace that you have to get access to the to the upper intake. Hold on, let's do that again. After you're done struggling with the oh. <laughs> After you're done struggling with the oh. <laughs> After the O-ring is seated and on, <clears throat> you can put your blow-off valve on and then put your V-band clamp on.